here this afternoon. And so you'll just see increasing clouds with temperatures in the 80s. But some of those showers do arrive this evening into the overnight hours. Some people get that lucky uh, needed rainfall here, Megan. Others will miss out. We'll talk more about it in main weather in just a couple minutes. All right, Todd, we'll see you then. So your ability to turn right on red at certain downtown intersections will soon be restricted. The Indianapolis City County Council approved the plan during Monday night's meeting during the legislative session. State lawmakers passed an amendment limiting the city council's ability to pass those no turn on red restrictions. But city leaders say the law won't go into effect until July 1st. So yesterday, the council approved adding no turn on red signs to three intersections. Those will be at Shadeland Avenue and 71st, 22nd and Delaware streets and Palmer and Meridian streets. A new high-rise building is now planned for downtown Indy. The City County Council voted in favor of the plan to issue bonds for the construction of a new hotel. WRTV's Nico Panisi has the details. The downtown Indianapolis skyline as we're currently seeing it will soon be changing. That's because construction of the new $625 million Signia Hotel just got the backing of City County Council at Monday's meeting. The 40-story building will have 800 rooms and will be located across from the Indiana Convention Center. It's part of a larger effort to redevelop Pan Am Plaza and expand the convention center. Revenue from the hotel will be used to pay off the bonds, which means it will not require any new taxes. And that's a point city county councilors wanted to make very clear to Indianapolis residents. We are expanding the city, we are growing, we're expanding our convention business, and isn't it miraculous that every time we've expanded that convention business, we continue to fill it up and have to grow again. We're going to become one of the top tier convention cities in the country and stay competitive. Visit Indy says the hotel and expansion are necessary to make sure Indianapolis can keep bringing conventions to town. They estimate the eight development could bring in nearly $3 billion in revenue over the next 10 years. And construction of the hotel is expected to be completed in 2026. Reporting in downtown Indianapolis, Nico Panisi, WRTV. All right, Nico, thank you. Another big issue the City County Council is taking on involves Indy's Violence Reduction Plan. One ordinance would adopt local gun safety measures, including a ban on military-style guns. Another would raise the minimum age to buy firearms to 21, and a third would end permitless carry of handguns in Marion County. But the ordinance also acknowledges none of those measures can be enforced, according to state law, unless the state house approves them. IMPD is now investigating a shooting that left one man injured. It happened just after midnight near 23rd and North Capitol Avenue. That's on Indy's near north side. Investigators say the man is expected to survive. There's no word yet on a possible suspect in this case or a motive for the shooting. Versity Blood Center of Indiana is in critical need of blood donors. This morning, they issued an emergency appeal for people to donate. Versity says it has seen a drastic drop in the number of scheduled appointments. It has nearly 2,500 open spots over the next seven days. The organization aims to have a three-day supply of blood available for local hospitals at all times. Right now, it has less than a one-day supply on the shelves. If you'd like to donate, you could schedule an appointment at Versity.org. Walk-in donors are also welcome. New information about the fatal plane crash in Virginia that left four people dead. ABC's Rina Roy shows us it took authorities more than an hour to get F-16 fighter jets in the air after getting no response from the pilot. Growing questions about what happened inside a small Cessna Citation jet before it crashed. Dramatic audio captures the tense moments as several F-16 pilots desperately try to contact the Cessna pilot who was not responding and flying in restricted airspace near the U.S. Capitol Sunday afternoon. One of those six fighter jets causing that sonic boom.